What's up everybody? This is Prophetess Kimberly Moses. Today I want to talk to you guys about relationships. Yes, relationships. They are a big part of our lives. Everyone desires someone. Uh, sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes people may not desire a person or a spouse uh, in a particular season. But sometimes, you know, we might desire someone. All right. Or other times we might get lonely. We want someone to talk to. Maybe we want somebody to hang out with. Whatever. Relationships are a big part of our life. God has never uh, meant for us to be alone by ourselves on some island somewhere. All right. So we're going to talk about relationships and we're going to talk about the right questions to ask um, before you get in a committed relationship. Uh, earlier this week, I put on my Facebook page. If you're not following me on Facebook, follow me. A prophetess Kimberly Moses. So I put on my Facebook page, ask me some questions, you know, about relationships. So I'm going to answer those questions and more at the end of this broadcast. All right. So you guys, I published a book earlier this year and I have it right here. It's called Single in the Right Way to Mingle, all right, by Dr. Ron Webb. And I also had an opportunity to write a little bit to do some ghost writing on the book. So I believe in the book. So if you have any questions or if you would like to teach in a day, you can get this book from Amazon.com. Barnes and Nobles are at all major retailers. You can get the book. All right, so a lot of people, you are in a relationship. And you're asking or maybe you have a you know maybe you're thinking like is this the right person for me um should i go ahead and jump the broom should i say i do but before you say i do we gotta be thorough we don't want to get married to somebody and you uh, see where some red flags and you're like oh my god what did i get into oh my god i made a mistake all right so let's talk about these questions uh to you know before we say i do let's let's get into this all right so there's nothing worse than having secrets ah oh, when you have a secret come up in a relationship you feel like the person lied to you you feel like they you know weren't honest and that hurts you know you don't want to get in a, a marriage with someone and you find out they're gay like oh my god like really you don't want to get in a marriage with someone and you find out, you know, that they're robbing banks. Come on now, right? So we got to get to the nitty gritty. We need to get to the root of the issues and be upfront about it. Don't worry about hurting somebody's feelings. Hey Amen. This is the time before you say I do to find out if this is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with to find out. All right. And who cares uh, about, you know, uh, being a people pleaser? I oh, mean, this is this is about you. I mean, this is about your life, your destiny, your purpose. So you don't want to deal with issues down the line after you say I do because it's too late and you don't want to. Nobody makes nobody gets married to get divorced. Nobody you know, has uh, the, 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 the word divorce when they say, okay, I'm going to marry you and they're going to get divorced. They thinking about divorcing. Nobody does that. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but normal people don't do that. So before you say I do, let's get to the root of these issues. Let's ask the right questions before you say I do. All right. Cause you don't want to be married. And then all this stuff start coming up and you're like, wow, really? I never knew you. All right, because that's going to lead to frustration. That's going to lead to divorce. That's going to lead to un, uh, uncommitment in the marriage. That's going to lead to just you're going to be miserable in the marriage. So you don't want that. All right. This is going to also lead to recklessness. You don't want to despise your spouse. You don't want to hate one another. You want your marriage to be blessed, loving. So we're going to ask number one, ask the person. How do you deal with difficulties? How do you deal with difficulties? All right. Some people, they handle stress better than others. Some people, they lash out at you. Literally, they'll take their whole job, everything they went through on a day, you know, throughout, throughout their work day. They suppress it. Then they, ah, they unleash it on you. Some people, they get violent. They want to hit, punch, 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 punch. 
some people you know they were draw and i'm guilty for that i would draw they get quiet you know so how do you deal with difficulties if you can ask this and if you have been through something with your the, the person you are in courtship with if you make it through amen then you know that you know when things get tough in a in a marriage that person going, is going to stick around because marriage is supposed to be to death do you part right but some it, some people don't make it like that some people when things get hard they walk away they want to run but in marriage is a covenant you know before god you and your spouse you know it's a covenant so things will get tough sometimes in some seasons so you got to prepare for that you want to know that the person that you're saying i do too are you thinking about marrying that they're going to be with you and then you to thick and thin do the thick and thin they're going to be with you they're not going to walk away if you get sick they're not going to quit you know if you lose your job and leave, leave you high and dry you know if something was to happen a tragedy they're going to be with you so you need to find out right now how do you deal with difficulties ask the person that you're considering you know uh saying i do to or you know marrying ask them how do you deal with difficulties all right because you know some people they want to confront the issue and this is a, a lot of things like women they're more communicators they want to talk 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 you know but men they kind of you know don't talk as much you know um so a lot of relationships people uh, they bump heads because one person wants to talk about the issues up front and the other person wants to suppress it kind of sweep it underneath the rug and maybe deal with it later so you need to find out find out you know if you try to hide it the problems are still there so let's just be up front all right discuss the issues right now all right you know in marriage you're gonna have misunderstandings you're gonna have challenges you're gonna have some bumps in the road you know but just talk have a respectful dialogue between you know the person that you're in courtship with all right question number two and this is a big one you guys are you over your ex are you over your ex are you going to keep on bringing up your ex-girlfriend every time we're out? Are you going to keep comparing me to your ex? Because if, that, if that's the case, then you're not over your ex. You know, is your ex, you know, still calling you, still texting you, still stalking your pages, you know, things like that. You know, are you over your ex? If you're not over your ex, if they're not over their ex, then it's no point in saying I do. Because you can't bring that into a marriage. Amen. You cannot bring that into a marriage. You know, that soul tie needs to be broken. It needs to be destroyed. You know, or this new relationship, this new covenant is going to be divided from the start. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. All right. So this is the crazy part. Some people, they want to hold on to their ex and try to keep their ex around so no one else can have them. If that's the case, you're not ready. You're not ready for uh, 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 to, for marriage. So let them go. Remember, they're your ex for a reason. Remember that. Another question that we need to ask, you know, how will you celebrate the holidays? You'd be surprised. You know, it may seem simple, but it's really big, you know. Some couples, you know, they want to stay home and do their own thing. Some couples, you know, they always want to go to the mom house or maybe the father's house. Or maybe, are you going to go to the wife's family house every year? Or are you going to go to the husband's side of the family every year? You got to decide. You know, think about it. You're uh, in a new relationship. So you got to think about whose family how are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are your beliefs? What are your religious beliefs? Number one, are you a believer? Are you, are you, un, uh, you know, are you unsaved? You know, we got to think about these things. You're not going to talk about so much about why believers don't, shouldn't date unbelievers, you know? And if you're thinking that you can save someone, you're wrong. You are wrong, right? 
And, you know, the scripture says, you know, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. All right. So don't date. Don't even entertain that. You know, I stand by this. My husband made videos about Christian shouldn't date a Muslim. I feel like you're settling. And then your relationship with God is the most important relationship. So you need to ask questions. You know, literally, you know, what are your beliefs? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even entertain a relationship with you if you're not saved, right? You know, uh, what what do you want to do on the holidays? You know, and a lot of things will come up. You'd be surprised. You know, you may marry someone and you find out they were into voodoo. Their families, their mother, your mother-in-law's a witch. What do you do? You know, this is real life. I met people. I counsel people. You know. The in-laws were putting word curses on, on, the, on the lady. I'm like, well, really? So, and, and it costs a lot of marital strife. So you need to get to the, the root of the issue. You need to meet that person's family. You know, I know people say, I'm not marrying your family. You know, I'm marrying you. But at the end of the day, some of that is partially true. Because, you know, even though the, 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 the son should leave their mother and father and cleave unto the wife and the two should become one, you know, that that person came from this tree the apple fell from the tree and whatever that tree whatever the apple came from whatever the tree that apple came from is still showing fruit of that tree all right it's like an evil tree bringing forth evil fruit a good tree bringing forth evil fruit uh, excuse me a good tree bringing forth good fruit a evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit so, you know, you, you get married to somebody and their family's jacked up, you know, alcoholism and cheating, womanizing and stuff like that. And then it's manifesting in the man that you said I do to. All right. So meet the family. Is this someone that you want to be attached to? Like, so just get, just get to the root of the issue up front. All right. So if you marry for for uh, example, and relig re religious beliefs are important. So if you marry a Jehovah Witness, you're not going to be able to celebrate birthdays or holidays. You know, are you are you willing to give that up? Just think about it. You know, do you want to risk do you want to risk your relationship with Jesus if you marry a Muslim, someone that don't even believe that Jesus was the Messiah? So. Will you uh, celebrate Halloween? You know, things like that. You know, most Christians don't celebrate. We shouldn't celebrate Halloween, but some do. You know, will, will, will you do that? Another question that we should ask, you know, money, about money. Now, money is one of a relationship killer. A lack of money is stressful. When one spouse makes all the money, you know, then that could be stressful or it could be beneficial. It depends on what you decide to do initially. See, some husbands don't want their wives to work because they want them to be a housewife. They want to provide and take care. Okay, if the wife agrees with that, cool. You know, um, but what, what if, if, you know, if it's stressful and the one spouse doesn't make enough and that's stressful and then it's a, it's a lack every month. What about if one spouse makes all the money and controls all the money and the other spouse feels uh you know inferior like they can't do anything you know they feel controlled or manipulated you know so you have to think about that you know about money you know so is my debt your debt will you bail me out you know um are we gonna pay the bills 50 50 are you know like you you gotta ask these questions you know are you willing to budget are you saving how's your credit score you know are you disciplined and spending do you spend all the money that you have you know are we gonna have a joint bank account can i trust you with money are you gonna leave the bank account depleted are you gonna take all the money you know, who's going to be in charge of paying the bills? You know, have you ever declared bankruptcy? Um, 
do you save money are you do, are you saving money do you have any investments iras cds stocks you know do you uh Do you have a problem releasing the checkbooks to one who knows how to balance the books? You know, so these are important questions you guys to ask, you know, uh, before you say I do. You know, before you before you make a get in a, a committed relationship, we need to ask these questions. All right, so let me go to my Facebook and I'm going to pull up some questions. Okay, so Elizabeth asks, is there really a soulmate that God makes for you? Is there a soulmate that God makes for you? Well, I depend I it, it depends. My question my answer, excuse me, my answer to that question, is there a soulmate that God makes for you? I believe there's someone out there for everyone. You know, I believe that, you know, God will connect you to the right people. Because if you're a child of God, God will order your steps. He will order your steps and he won't allow everyone in your path. He won't allow everyone, you know, to be connected to you. And I believe that God has a person out there that's going to love you, cherish you, respect you. And he, there's someone out there that's praying to meet you. All right. So I believe, yes, there's a soulmate out there for you. Guess what? When Adam, uh, he fell asleep, God put him in a deep sleep, took out his rib. He took out his rib and he formed Eve. So God, God handcrafted Eve just for Adam. So I do believe, you know, there's a soulmate out there just for you that God made just for you. All right. While ye asks, why don't women submit to their husbands? Ooh, that's good. You know, I think in this uh, generation, uh, there was a rise of the feminine spirit. You know, the feminist movement, I should say. And, you know, women, they wanted to be more independent. They were all about women's rights. And they fought hard, don't get me wrong. You know, I thank God for the women being empowered and things like that. But I thank God for like Susan B. Anthony and things like people like her, you know, that fought for women to have rights. Because in certain societies, like in the Muslims, you know, they have to wear turbans and they have to, uh, they, they're not allowed to show their beauty. They're, they're supposed to be hidden. They're not allowed to drive and things like that. So I thank God for the women's rights. But God is a God of order. And God, you know, he made husband the, the head of his wife. And then... It then comes the children. So I think when the whole feminist movement came, you know, the, the role switched a little bit. The women got too independent. And it's like, you know what? I can get a job. I can make my own money. And they begin to get an education. And they begin to make more money than these men. And, you know, it came with power. They got empowered. And I feel like during this transition, they kind of lost respect for men. You know, and they kind of wanted to be more domineering, kind of in a sense. So I think this is the reason why women have a hard time. I'm not saying all women, but most women do. You know, uh, they have a hard time submitting to, uh, you know, their husbands. Um, but the Bible is detailed. It tells us why submit to your own husband. You know, submit to your own husband. So that means your husband he comes before any other man. He comes before your pastor, your spiritual leader. Amen. So women, we naturally want to communicate and express ourselves. So men are kind of opposite. You know, uh, they don't really like to show too much emotion. So women, we just got to learn how to fight the battle in a different way and go in our prayer closets and get, you know, get, get our prayers across. Amen. And believe God to bring some order and change in relationships. So that's my reason why I feel like women don't submit to their husbands. But his question was, why don't women submit to their husbands anymore? That's not true for all wives, you know. All right. 
the next question is, you know, Pamela asks, is this my season for a committed relationship? Now, I want to say, you know, you know if it's your time to have a relationship. If you're busy, you know, you probably won't have time for a relationship because relationship, it takes time. You got to invest time with somebody. You know, when I was single, you know, I wrote a lot of books. It was all about me and my ministry. So when I began to court, I couldn't do that as much. You know, as a wife, I can't do that as much. I had to learn how to balance. So you know in your heart if it's time for you to give someone else your space. Are you willing to share? Are you ready to share your personal space with somebody? Are you, are you ready to be accountable to somebody? You know, are you willing to share, you know, with someone? You know, it could be little things like maybe food, time, you know, uh, just your personal space. Are you ready for that? Most people, and um, I, I was talking to a gentleman, and he said, most prophets, you know, they want to just be in God's presence all day and pray. And it's kind of hard to date a prophet, you know. So are you, are you willing to share your time? So only you can answer that question. All right. Sylvia asks, if you're trying to live right should you be dating someone who is not there yet? My answer is no. The reason why? Because that person is going to cause you to stumble. If you're not living right yourself, or you're struggling yourself, or you're not strong enough, that person is going to cause you and pull you back into sin. Bad company corrupts good character or good morale. It depends on which translation. So you should not, you know be dating an unbeliever believer shouldn't be dating an unbeliever you know and it all comes about your standards you have to change your uh standard of how you see yourself your 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 um perception okay i used to be a club girl but now i'm a woman of god so i'm not gonna date someone in the club you know, I'm going to date someone, you know, in, in church. I always told people, uh, I, I told everybody this. I said when I was single, if, if that man could not take me to the next level, I wouldn't date him. So, that has to be your mentality. If that person can't take you to the next level, why date him? Why waste time? Okay, she asked another question. She said, should I date that person if they're not living right, even if they're a good person? still not you know you could be a good person but have no relationship with jesus you need someone that's gonna you need a man you know and, th and this is go both ways a man you know you need someone that's gonna pour into you that's gonna encourage your walk with the lord a man that's gonna get you to the next level all right and god does have the right person for you all right he's coming i believe that you know, when you focus on Jesus, you be about his business, he'll be about your business. If you delight yourself in God, he will give you the desires of your heart. All right. Somebody asked, Angela asked, how to clearly discern who the person is. Um, let me read again. Angela asked, how to clearly, clearly discern who sent that person. When you have the Holy Spirit in you. You'll get red flags about a person. Even if you can't know what it is, you'd be like, something ain't right. I can't put my finger on it. You just feel like something ain't right. Whoa. That's how you'll be able to discern. Many times we look past the red flags and we just brush stuff off. And then we realize, oh my God, I made a mistake. I should have listened. I knew something wasn't right. That's how you discern. Go with your first instinct. Like, nah, something ain't right. All right, it says the enemy is clever using scriptures to their advantage and often appears to be answered prayers. Yes, there's always a counterfeit before the real deal. There's always someone uh, that play. I, I had guys that pretended to love Jesus just to talk to me, to get into my circle. And then all they wanted was sex or all they wanted was to cause me to stumble. And I had to cut that off. All right, so don't get caught up in looks. Don't get caught up in 
you know if they're a good person they provide if they like take care of you sit and give you money don't get caught up in none of that stuff amen don't even get caught up uh in companionship if they're like oh well i don't have nobody else to hang out with or spend my time with or talk on the phone with. so what find a friend in jesus don't get the emotional attachments are the worst ones amen to break because you just get so attached to someone and then you got to cut them off because they're a counterfeit why waste time? I was told, uh, I told God when I was single, I'm not going to plant bad seeds. So I shouldn't reap bad seeds. So, and that, that works, okay? Don't waste time. Okay, Alvin asks, is it worth to be involved in a long distance relationship? Well, only you can really answer that. Uh, but I will say, long distance can be challenging versus someone locally because... You know, you're not going to see the person every day, but thank God for technology. Now uh, you can video chat, you know, all the time um, and you can talk on the phone. So back in the day, it probably was tougher having a long distance relationship because you didn't have all that technology. Um, I dated my husband. We were long distance. I was in Colorado and he was here in South Carolina. We did that for months and we met each other i think in april and then that's when he proposed to me and when we met he decided to go ahead this is what he wanted and uh, i went back to colorado and then i think i transitioned to north carolina to stay with my parents for maybe about four to six months and then we finally got married and we yeah i moved down to south carolina to be with my my man but we have to put in the work. So long distance, you got to put in the work because you can't go out, you know, locally and go to the movie. So what we did, we got creative. We would put the Facebook Messenger on and then we'll pull up Netflix on our, we both had laptops, we'll pull up Netflix on the laptop. So he can see my face while I'm watching Netflix with him, like a show. We'll watch like Flash, you know, that's one of my favorite shows. You know, I love superheroes. So we watch The Flash and on like our laptops and we'll be on Facebook Messenger, you know, and we just talking and chatting and, you know, so that's how we used to date. And we got creative. We'll go cook dinner at the same time, meet back up and we'll eat, you know, so you just got to get creative. And uh, it's all about a trust, uh, trust factor. Do you trust that person? So you it is it is worth it if you love that person. So if you love that person and that's who you want to spend the rest of your life with, you'll put in the work. All right, the next question Victor asks, is it possible for a man who is not called into ministry to propose his love for for a woman of God? Yes. Yes, not everybody's going to be behind the pulpit. Not everybody's going to have a title. But we're all called to do the work of an evangelist. We're all called to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, my husband, he doesn't have a title, uh, but he helps me in ministry. He's behind the scenes. So he proposes love for me. So what it is, it is possible. For example, look at Joyce Meyer. You see Joyce Meyer, but you don't see her husband. But her husband is very involved in her ministry. He's just behind the scenes. Sometimes you have both couples you know in the forefront working side by side tag teaming sometimes you'll see more of the husband going forth and the wife is by his side supporting him you know or sometimes you see more of the wife and the husband you know it's beside her or in the background you know but at the end of the day you know god put them together and jesus is the focus and you don't have to have a title um per se but you know what god put together no one could put asunder so it is it is possible all right as long as you're not a hindrance to that person's assignment then you know i don't see any issue with it as long as you're going to come in alignment uh with that person's assignment and realize that they have a call on their life and they got to fulfill their call then I think, you know, God will be pleased with that, you know, as long as you help support the vision, all right, and not become a hindrance to it. All right, Sabrina asks, I want to, 
Okay, let me see. Let me go to the next question. Okay, somebody asked for wisdom and guidance in the relationship that they are in. So I'm going to pray. If you're looking at this video, if you want wisdom and guidance, I want to go ahead and pray that God will reveal to you, you know, his plan. And if that person is the one. So, Father God, I just pray for everyone underneath the sound of my voice. I pray that you give them wisdom, God. God, you love to give us wisdom generously, God, without reproach. So, God, give us wisdom. Give us strategy. Show us, God, if it's the right person, Lord, that we should be involved in the courtship with. Show us, oh God. Reveal to us. Make it plain, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, our steps. Order our steps. Lord, remove the wrong people out of our path, oh God. Lord, give us, Lord God, peace about the decision. Lord, prepare our hearts for the breakup. If if you, God, is saying that this is not the right person, prepare our emotions for it. Strengthen us now. God, I just ask you, Lord God, Lord, that you will lead and guide our steps. We come against the counterfeits. Lord God, we come against anyone sent from the enemy in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you guys. I pray that this teaching blessed you guys. I pray that you are blessed by this video. Remember, before you say I do, ask the right questions. All right, I love you. And I want to see you guys in the next broadcast.